Okay, now it's time for us to start creating some CSS style rules. And the first thing we're going to cover is how we can work with three different types of style rules in our project. The first way is with a way that we call inline, an inline style. Now think about an inline style as just being something that is in line with the content that you're trying to change. So right now this line in the document which says in Congress July the 4th 1776, I'm going to come inside that opening P tag and type style equals color and let's make it red. There's not a name for every color. We'll learn more later about how to use hexadecimal values as a way of expressing color. But for right now, we're just going to use basic colors, and so names are fine. Now, whenever I press Control S to save, you can see in the browser that that line now turns red. And what I've done is to have marked up this one P tag. And so the second P tag, obviously, does not have a style applied to it because the style that I used here in line with this one paragraph told only that one line to be read. Now, the second way that you could use styles is to come up into the head section. Right after title, we'll press the enter key and type style and then tab so that Emmett can create the the opening and closing style tags. Make sure I come right between them. Press enter so we'll have a blank line to work with. Now I want to create a style rule that's going to look a little different than the one down below. The one on line 28 down here where I typed, you see it starts with style. Well, up here in the head section, we just use the style element itself. And then in between the opening and closing style tags, we will type what we call a selector. The P tag is going to be our selector. We get a space and then opening curly brace and then press enter. And here we're going to type a color value and we'll call this teal. First of all, let's talk about why we call this a selector. That's just the terminology for CSS in the same way that whenever I talk about the property of this selector, I want that to be the color property of that selector and the value of this color property for that selector is going to be teal. So the P is selecting the paragraph elements. It's the selector. It's selecting that P tag. And then the property value pair. And these will always be in a pair. And the property will always end with a colon. And the value will always end with a semicolon. So what I'll do is press Control S to save. And if you'll look in the browser, you'll see that that one tag that I made red earlier is still red. And then the paragraphs below that now have that greenish color called teal. The unordered lists that we have are still black. There's no paragraphs there. And then the other paragraphs at the end of the declaration all have that teal. So the question that we ask first of all is why did this first P tag content, the one here on line 30, which says P tag in Congress, July the 4th, 1776. Why didn't it change to teal? Why did it stay red? And this is one of the first lessons about understanding the cascade of cascading style sheets. The first lesson is that the style rule that is most specific to a line of content or to an object, that the style rule that is most specific 
to that piece of content will always win whenever there's a conflict. Up here, I said, find all of the P tags and make them teal. Down here, I have a rule that says, but make this one red. And since this red down here, this style rule on line 30 is more specific to this one piece of content right here, then it overrides the paragraph declaration that I've made up here in my style rules. This is called a declaration block. So we're learning some new terms. Whenever we put the name of the HTML element, or there are other things that we can select besides just elements. But whenever we put that in here and then give it a property and value pair, what we've done is to create a declaration. What happens though if I do another one of these? So let's just say I accidentally forget that I've got a paragraph already marked above. Because let me tell you that if you use embedded styles, then rather than being six or eight lines long like this is, th this style section could become as many as a hundred lines long. And it's easy to forget what you've done above and then for you to come back later and create something that is actually in conflict with something above. So right now I have a P selector that's telling all paragraphs to turn teal unless there is a specific inline command telling it otherwise. And then down later in my style rule, I have another P selector telling all P tags to turn blue. Which ones will change whenever I do control S? Well, let's see, control S. And now what we see is that our first line is still red. And now all of our other paragraphs are blue. Our unordered lists are all still black. And when we come down to the bottom, our closing paragraphs are all blue. So what we see here is sort of a reinforcement of that first law that you have to accept about cascading style rules. The style rule that is most specific to the content is going to rule. So again, line 33 down here, the color red for this first line that has the July 4th date on it, that is still the most specific style rule for that piece of content. But now what about up here where I have two different style rules of the same? What happens, the browser, and boy, you've got to understand this and don't ever, ever forget it. It's called the law or the principle of normal flow. You can call it a law or a principle. The principle of normal flow. What that means is that browsers read top to bottom all the way down until they get to the end. And they remember, the browser will remember the order in which it reads something. And so as the browser is reading down here, it comes to this line nine and says, okay, all paragraph tags are gonna be teal. And then it comes to the next line and it says all paragraph tags are gonna be blue. And so what the browser does, the browser says, okay, the guy who built this website just lost his mind. He told me up here they were gonna be teal. Now he tells me down here they're gonna be blue. And the last one counts. If you have a selector defined, and then you try to redefine it later, the one that you do next is going to change. So keep this in mind that number one, the style rule that you apply in line with the content will almost always be the one that rules above every other possible exception. And if you have repeats in your style rules, the last one that you give is going to replace all of the other property values for that same element that might be above it. We've seen here two ways in which we can create style rules. One is inline and the other is what we call embedded. Now, what I want to do right now is I want to just get rid of, of the embedded styles. And let me tell you why. I have three HTML files here. I'm gonna do everything I can to not repeat myself 
as I work from one file to the next. And if I have to go through this file and declare every paragraph a different color, then that's going to get to be way beyond manageable pretty quick. I don't want to ever use an inline style if I can help it. I will only use an inline style if I know that just that one location or that one object needs a specific style and that's never going to happen again in my website, then I will use an inline style. I will never use an embedded style because there's just a better way to work with them. If I have these style rules in this document, then I have to go in and put those same style rules or different style rules here in this file and also in this file. This just makes the files big and long and it creates three places at which we can have to manage our code. The inline style rule is one place. The embedded styles would be a second place. And the third one is going to be in a place in our folder. We're going to right click, create a new file. We're going to call this styles.css. There's nothing magic about the name. Styles.css. You could have called it elephant.css. It doesn't matter. The name makes no difference whatsoever. But when I come back here, I don't want to have to manage rules in three places. One, inline. Two is embedded. I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. And notice that when I delete the embedded, I take out those style tags too. And I come to the styles.css file. And this is a place where you're probably going to shout hallelujah because in a CSS file, we never have HTML tags. So you're not going to put style in here and hope that Emmett creates it for you. It won't work. All we do here is type a selector, our opening curly brace, press enter and give it some sort of a color. And I think we'll just go back to that teal for just a moment so you can see the change. So right now I'm telling it in the style sheet, any paragraph you find, make the color teal. And I will save this. And so far there's no change in our document. It's still blue based upon what I had earlier. I'm going to come back to declaration. And before anything that I do in styles will work, in my HTML file, I have to create a link element in the head section. And when you type link and press tab, Emmett will create that line. For the href attribute, we'll just type in the name of the CSS file. We named it styles with an S dot CSS. Make sure you don't misspell it because if you misspell it, then that's the same as that file not even existing. So whenever I type in the styles CSS, control S to save, then you'll see that in the HTML file, everything is working just the way that it should because of the principle of normal flow. The principle of normal flow says the browser will read top to bottom what it sees, it remembers in the order in which it found it. And what's going to happen right now, the browser will read down to line eight and it sees that it needs to make a jump over to a file called styles.css. The browser will jump into the styles.css file and read all of the style rules that we've built here. It stores them in memory and then it comes back up and it picks up right where it left off and continues to read. And again, even though it's got this content in it that it found in the CSS file that said make all of the P tags teal, just say it this way, it is closer to the content. And what's going to happen in CSS? The rule that is closest to the content is always going to win.